Am I normal? Is this normal? Are these normal? Are these normal? Is this normal? Are these normal? Is uh, that normal? Is my heart normal? My head? My gut? This tank top? Wearing this, is this normal? What's normal? Super brave friends and accomplices. I am Joe Karlovsky, the super brave teacher who might be normal. I don't know. We're going to get to this. It's coming up. Before we do, like this channel, share this channel, do what you do. I know this is probably becoming like that part where you skip through because you're like, Joe, we know. I've liked it. I've shared it. Thank you if you have. If you haven't, please do subscribe to this channel. Let it be known. Share it with people like on Pinterest or random groups that you think might like this stuff. Share it with your university, with your high school, with your GSA, whatever, whatever you think, I'll take it. I'll take it. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. Thank you. I'll keep this short and sweet. Bye. Hey friends. So I'm going to start with a story and I'm going to, I'm going to try and be, to be more vulnerable on this channel. And I want to tell the story of me going to high school. So I have a different situation that I went away to a prep school. I went away to a preparatory school, meaning that from the age of 14, I have been training and preparing to be a teacher. I have been, I went away to like a boarding school, to a prep school, so that I could start preparing for life of ministry and start preparing to be a teacher. And I'm not, that's another video, that's another time to talk about that whole experience, or that's a whole memoir, is that whole experience. But what I remember is thinking to myself, oh my goodness, I just want to be normal, I just want to fit in. And I remember, I don't know about your family, but in our family, we go clothes shopping like once a year. It's like the big thing. Back to school, clothes shopping, you know, like, these are the clothes that I'm gonna have for a year, so I gotta get some good clothes. So we're going clothes shopping, and my second brother um, and I were going to high school at the same time, and I'm like, show me what to wear, <laughs> show me what to wear, I just wanna like fit in. And he's like, get this sweatshirt, this like Adidas sweatshirt, and like get this like Reebok sweatshirt or whatever. So I'm like, okay, if he says to do it, I'm gonna get it. And it turned into like, I just remember him laughing at me like, you think that this is cool? Like, it's not, don't you know anything? Like, this is not like this little black Adidas sweatshirt or like this gray, big, 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 big Reebok sweater, sweatshirt, like, no. I remember thinking, at the time I remember thinking, okay, don't listen to your older brother, that's what they do. I'm not even faulting him for doing that. It's, it's actually kind of hilarious when you think about like me in this big ass Reebok sweatshirt. Um, but I remember getting there and thinking, okay, I want to like make it known that I'm different and that I am different but also cool and like you're just trying to figure out this whole normativity thing. And I was like, okay, I can dress like everybody else but I'm going to take a risk. And I remember getting like these little like rings or whatever. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna wear these rings. And I was wearing like these colorful rings and so excited to like go to the cafeteria and wear my rings and like just kind of like have a little Joel pizzazz, if you will. And I remember that same brother coming over to me and be like, take those off, take them off. Don't draw attention to yourself, like stop that. And it really hurt, and I know that he was doing his best to protect me because I had a lot of stuff happen to me in high school. Um, and I think he was just like, I, you're gonna get enough crap thrown at you, so why are you like signing up to have crap happen to you? Which is another story of like, why can't we have people advocating for us and blah, blah, blah. I'm not here for that. But it's more that whole idea of like, this constant wrestling in my life to just be normal. And then I realized you don't have to be normal. So what, camera keeps falling. So what, so what do I want? What is normal for me? And what even is normal? So I wrote it down because I want to really focus on these two questions and they are, how was this normal identity produced? Like, where did that come from? And why do I believe that it's important to be normal? So first of all, how was this normal identity produced? Well, I definitely believe that it's nurture. It's definitely this something for me that I've seen in my life 
that it's been nurtured into me. What is normal? I'm like, is this gonna fall? What is normal for me? What's normal in our belief systems? What's normal in our community? What's normal in our church body? What's normal at our school? And you clearly know who fits in the normal group and who fits in the not normal group. And you have to make a choice. Are you gonna be normal? Are you gonna fit in? Or are you gonna be not normal and get made fun of, get hurt? And I constantly felt like I was trying to straddle both, where it's like, I know I'm not normal, I know I'm not that that person, but I wanna be. So I, I was really just nothing in high school. I really was really just like doing my best. I'm not faulting myself or shaming myself, but I was really nothing. And then in college, I got to have a little more courage and I had some really great friends in college who like let me be a little more abnormal and I would like wear some cool clothes and things that I thought were more fashionable or whatever. And, but it was always like that struggle of what's normal and, and where is this coming from? And then you get out and I remember my first trip to Colombia to teach and um, I was told like, don't stick out too much. You're a foreigner, don't stick out too much. So I would buy, I bought all this like gray clothes and black clothes and brown clothes to try to not stand out too much. And my birthday came up within the first few months of living in Bogota and my students bought me a blue, a blue dress shirt. And, you leave because you're so... and they said, you know what? We know you probably don't like colors because you don't wear them, but we thought that you would like this because we thought it would look good on you. And I remember thinking like, I am trying my best to be normal and to fit in and I, I'm not listening to what I know to be true for myself. And if you look at a city like Bogota, for example, it is a city of artists, of people wearing colors and cre creative people and eccentric people who are just being their true self. And here I was like trying to, to fit in. And I guess it, like I said, was produced by these norms that were handed down to me. And then I, and I take full responsibility for it, listened to it and said, okay, I, I, got, I guess I gotta do that. The rule follower in me was like, I guess I gotta do that. But then it goes to that second question of, why do I believe that it's important to be normal? And I'm gonna say that for me, with the various traumas that I experienced in my life, it was important for me to be normal, to be safe. It was important for me to be normal so that I didn't receive constant abuse, which I still received, but less. It was important for me to be normal so that I wouldn't lose a community of people that if I wasn't normal, and in my case, it's being a gay man, that I knew that if I wasn't normal per their rules, that I would be excommunicated and that I would be dropped from this system. So I can say that why was being normal important for me is because I was being safe. And my guess is that our stories as you watch this aren't that different. That you also realize that this whole idea of normativity comes from our society and from your family and community and all these groups we associate ourselves with. And I'm gonna guess that why you do normal things is because you also want to fit in and you also want to be a part of a community and you also don't want to lose certain things and it's a risk to be who you are. And our society says these are things that are normal in our society and these are the things that are not normal. This is normal but this isn't normal. That? Ugh, I don't know if that's normal. And then we start living a life of comparing ourselves to this normal standard instead of comparing ourselves to ourselves. To com instead of comparing ourselves to ourselves. So it's more like for me now where I'm at, where I'm trying to get is, am I happy with this version of myself? Am I living an authentic life of integrity? Am I sparking bravery by having loving compassion and intense kindness, kindness and curiosity for others? Am I doing that right now? And if not, then that's not Joel's normal. That's not Joel's normativity for me. And you get to ask yourself the same question. What is normal for me? What is okay for me? And when others push back on that, because they will. Trust me, I have gotten pushback. I have gotten pushback. It has been a hard week. I get to say, you know what? I hear that 
and according to your standard, I'm not normal. But guess what? I'm okay with that. Because I'm me. Because I'm enough. And because I'm important. So, I want to share that with you. Whether you consider yourself normal or not, you are enough. You are important. You are loved. You are valuable. You are known. You have worth. Because it's you. Because your standard is what matters. So, yeah. Thanks for watching this channel. Like, subscribe, leave a comment. Thanks for listening. You are awesome. And Joel, you're awesome too. Keep being normal, abnormal, as long as it is authentic to you. Bye, friends. <laughs>